moderate at this session yep let's record um and i'm just going to briefly speak to why we are doing what we're doing um why is this master class necessary and then i'll go ahead and and um introduce the guest or the panelists um peaceville africa has been in the business of talent development talent management um record label business among um, other things within that the space and i think that the most striking um thing that, that uh, the company has picked up over the years is the knowledge gap there's a lot of enthusiasm there's a lot of zeal there's a lot of passion but very little know-how and so um the company has deemed it fit to create an opportunity to engage um to learn to cross fertilize ideas um, among other things. And so this is going to be a periodic, um, it's going to be happening um, at minimum one, uh, once every quarter. So you can look forward to, to us um, enabling this sort of environment um, on a consistent and, and constant basis. Um, for this specific session, we have uh, picked some of the most qualified and most eminent, if there's anything like that, um, personalities to be on the panel, um, guys who can bring maximum or optimal value to the, to the learning experience. Um, if you saw an ad to register, obviously you must have seen some of the uh, profiling that we did on, on them, particularly with, with Mark Byers and uh, Fabian first. I hope I, Fabian, I hope I pronounced your surname uh, properly. Yeah, perfect, yeah. <laughs> Great. I'm, I'm relieved, I'm a relieved man. Um, as, as well as um, Ernest Audu, uh, who we all like to call Rabbi. Uh, these guys are super, super qualified. Great value. In fact, I, I dare say optimal value to the learning experience. Um, ideally, your idea of a masterclass would be one in which um, one person is, is teaching. Um, it's a bit it's structured a bit usually structured a bit differently from this. This is more like a panel session. And the reason we've done it in that way is so that it can be a lot more interactive. So there are no long talks, so it doesn't get boring. Um, again, please, uh, let's make it as interactive from the off. Um, I'd like to implore you to drop us a note in the chat box. Just tell us, um, why you have joined this session? Or what's your expectation? Um, what would success look like at the end of the day for you? Um, also, don't forget to mention what it, what it is that you do. So that's the relevance of your expectation to um, what it is that you are currently doing. Um, so please, let, let's get the chat, chat box uh, popping straight away. So tell us what it is that you expect and tell us um, what it is that, that you do at the moment. Um, so straight away, let me introduce the panelists. I have introduced myself in case you missed it. My name is Bada, uh, Bada Akintude Johnson. I work for Viacom CBS Networks Africa as country manager in Nigeria. I'm also a music executive. Um, and on the panel, we have um, Mr. Mark Byers. It's the first time I ever added Mr. or put Mr. before his name. As <laughs> 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 my big brother, um, a man with an impressive and unbelievable reservoir of knowledge within the music and entertainment space. Um, he was 
former general manager Motown Records, um, the biggest uh, black music label in the world. Um, it's the same Motown Records, you know, um, in case you are doubting if it's another one. Uh, so, so we have the awesome privilege and pleasure to have um, Mark Byers with us on this, on this panel. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Mark, welcome. What's up, Adam, my brother? How's it going? Very well, thank you. Uh, so please, Mark, for the benefit of the audience, uh, what, what part of the world are you joining us from? I'm in Philadelphia right now, um, visiting my daughter and my parents and my brother. Um, I haven't traveled, uh, actually, since the last time I saw you in Nigeria. I haven't traveled in that long. Um, so it was, it was a mental thing to get on this plane and go from Los Angeles to Philly. It was definitely mental, but I'm glad I'm here. So I actually was supposed to stay from the 7th to the 11th, and I extended it to the 23rd. So I could spend a little bit more time with my family. It's absolutely necessary. Please enjoy your time out there, uh, Mark, and um, continue to, to stay safe. Um, Fabian, what part, of, what part of the world are you? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm in London. Oh, great. Um, yeah. So what's the weather like in London? It's, it's quite warm in Nigeria. Uh, it was very warm yesterday, but today is like, it's, yeah, it's, it's raining cats and dogs. So <laughs> it's London. <laughs> great. Thanks, Fabian. Um, Fabian is um, a PR, PR um, expert now working on developing artists, African artists. Um, in, in, Af in Europe and other parts of the world. Um, it comes with great experience having worked with some of the biggest names um, in the world of music. So, yes, um, thank you guys for responding. I can see the, the, chat, the chat box uh, popping. We have um, a, quite a, a wide range of, of um, should I say, expertise or areas of interest represented. Um, I see Fola Eden from the Fubo says, I'm a recording artist and a worship leader. Um, Yaro Lin says, I am hopeful and willing to learn ideas about music business. Um, Ephraim Safiyanu says, hi everyone. I personally have vast interest in, interest in music business. I'm an aspiring artist. Um, I hope to meet people with like minds and possibly learn how to move my music career. And um, Toju Praise, say, Praise rather says, I'm a gospel recording artist and a vocal coach. Um, DJ Wolves says, I'm a DJ content creator. I'm looking forward to learn about the music business and opportunities I can leverage on. Please keep um, the responses, keep, keep, keep them coming through, keep the chat bo box popping. I'll get to the rest of, the, of them as we go along. Let me quickly introduce the final member of the panel, my very good friend, my brother, um, a, a visionary and um, a very... Um, stubborn believer in, in the future of now possible. And you have to be stubborn um, to, to succeed in this environment um, because there's, a, there's a, a billion and one things that may you know, stand in the way. Um, and this man's stubbornness um, encourages me greatly. His name, Ernest Audu, we all call him Rabbi. Um, Rabbi is definitely Nigeria. So he shares the same weather. Um, as myself. Rabbi, welcome to the Music Masterclass. Thank you, brother. Thank you so, so much. Great to have you. Um, okay, so we'll just dive right into it. Um, if that's okay with, with the audience, we have yeah, quite, a, quite a number of people on the call. So I'll start with um, Mark. All right. Um, as I said before, and as it's been confirmed from the messages we're getting in the chat box that are many aspiring, um, or as we like to, like to call them here, up and coming artists in the room, who, um, as I know, have absolutely no access to support structures, the, the kinds that you have in, in, in the US and other developed parts of the world. Um, what practical steps should these persons take to launch out their careers? as independent artists in, in Africa. And the second part of the question is, if 
when they do need a team somewhere along the line, so teach you those persons on their team, then it does become necessary for them to have a team. Uh, I'll take, um, if you can repeat question one, and then we'll go into question two after that. Um, so, so it's I a little bit of noise. Um, I'm having a little retention problem for the noise. <laughs> Um, yeah. That's the A part. And the, the B part is when it, it does become necessary to constitute a team or to build a team to support. Yeah. What, okay. what skill set absolutely necessary? Uh, those yeah. What? Oh, and make sure that you're consistently put out, putting out the best music that you can. And I feel like when you're starting off, I think that you should move in a more abundant fashion when it comes to putting out music because essentially you're kind of working against the algorithms i think youtube is probably your best friend doesn't cost anything to upload i think that sometimes you know starting off i like i feel like people like to feel and see your journey so you know if you're making videos from your phone make them from your phone if that's what you have and be really consistent with the quality because people will they will feel the music if it's right um i also feel like you should take it upon yourself to go everywhere that you think a DJ is, you know, and introduce your music and yourself. I feel like you should be the biggest champion for whatever it is that you're doing. No one should be a bigger champion for your art than you, you know, and I feel like as, as you start growing, you know, you have to have people, one, um, get people on board to understand your territory really well when it comes to music, because the foundation from which you begin is very important. You know, and I feel like you can add on, as you're trying to get into other areas around the world, you can add on, you know, partners to that. But I feel like it's very important for you to really establish the ground for where you for where you live. And I don't think that matters no matter where you are in the world. Even if you're a Philadelphia artist, you have to establish that ground locally. And so you have a foundation to build upon. Absolutely. Um, I think if there's anything I... I... I take out straight away from what you just said now. The quality is and on top of that, you've got to be like the biggest um, advocate, the biggest marketer of your work and, and in your work. Um, and I, I do hope that, you know, um, the participants are, if there's anything that um, there's a lot of saying, noise that, yeah, please, guys. Can you put your microphones on mute, just so that we can we can eliminate the interferences? Please. Um, yeah. Okay. Cool. So um, I was saying that it will be prudent for the participants to. Um, make notes and just write the, the questions. If there's anything you want Mark or any of the panelists to elaborate on, please just note them. There'll be a session where we take um, Q and A's um, so they can do justice to, to, to the uh, questions that we may have. Okay. So Absolutely. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, apologies, guys, for for the interference and the, the disturbances. We'll just move on to, to Fabian. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Oh, okay. So, Fabian, um, I think in, in, in the course of my interaction with um, up-and-coming artists in Nigeria, the one thing that I think uh, they find most confusing is uh, the, the, to how to distinguish between the person or the private personality um, and the public persona of the artist. So um, is there really a need for that distinction to be made? Um, and, you know, for instance, does an artist like Lady Gaga um, have to be 
crazy as a how, does the artist have to be a crazy person you know um for gaga to be successful for the brand gaga to be successful or does the um brand gaga go ahead and record successes regardless of whether or not the person stephanie which is her name <laughs> um is crazy I, I hope you i framed the question you know, in a way that you yeah. you understand it go oh, fantastic yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, I worked with a lot of artists, even when I used to work for NRG in France, it's like the biggest radio station. And I saw like so many, I, met, I mean, I met so many artists and I think it really depends of the artist and the kind of music. And, you know, I met someone like Shakira. Uh, when you see her on TV and you meet her in the real life, she seems She needs to be someone else uh, for, our, for our audience and also because she's coming from South America, I think it's important for the audience so they can identif identify themselves to her. And sometimes you work with like more like very like pop artists from Europe, from the States and you need that, as you said, to create a brand because the music is something, but sometimes you can have good music, but if you don't have the good branding, it's not gonna work. Or sometimes, it, ha it happens sometimes, you can also have like, not bad music, but not good music, but a good branding. And thanks to your good branding, you can have like great results in terms of PR, DSPs, et cetera. So I think, you don't need to think like, do I need to create a brand or do I need to be myself? I think you just need to be yourself. And when you work on a project, you have to think like, what do you need to be different for the other, from the other artists? Because it's a very like competitive industry, but at the same time, you have to be yourself. Because if you are not the audience and the media, they would feel it and they would see it and it's not going to work. And you can see this with a few artists. Sometimes they, I mean, I work with a lot of new artists and sometimes they are totally lost and they don't know. I mean, the music flops, for example, at the beginning and they don't understand it's a long process. It, take, it can take like two, three, four years to build the brand. And sometimes they just want to be, I want to be a pop star, after I want to be Beyonce, after I want to be Britney Spears, after I want to be Justin Bieber, but it's not gonna work. Just be yourself and you will see, but yeah, I think you just need to, 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 to have your own personality. Mm. Fantastic, I, I think you make a brilliant point, Fabian. Uh, the business of branding, as I understand it, is the business of differentiation. Um, nobody yeah. takes a product that looks and, and feels or tastes the same as what, what already exists in the market and is able to sell. So um, in your case, to be big, to blow, as we say, local talent, um, you've got to keep your own identity, but ensure that the brand that you push out there um, offers something new, offers something fresh, offers something different. Um, at the end of the day, do not force it. Um, the brand that you push has to be natural to you, else it will be so easy to see. It will be very obvious. You will be found out. That's how to put it, really. <laughs> yes, and I, and I think, for example, your, your, your example with, with Lady Gaga is a good example, and you can compare to another pop star like Britney Spears, for example. It's like they are too massive, like they're the biggest pop star in the industry for the 20 last years. But Lady Gaga, she needed to create like a branding, like to be someone else to sell records. And Britney, she's a big star as well, but she, she's like a very humble person and that's why she's still here 20 years later. Because I think people, they have sympathy for her, they can identify to, the, to, to her, and she, she didn't need to create a person, a, like a character around her music or... So yes, I think like, it, it really depends. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you very much, Fabian. Um, I'll just move on straight away to um, Rabbi. Um, you, you've worked here um, all of your professional life um, in music, in, in talent management. Um, from your experience, what would you say are the biggest challenges facing artists in Nigeria? Not necessarily limited to musicians. Obviously, the focus will be music because it's the most vibrant and, and maybe the best performing of the talent areas. But 
what are the challenges that you think are the biggest ones that if today or tomorrow we find solutions to significantly will change the landscape? Well, I mean, I think, um, I mean, for Nigeria, we can, we, it is obvious that there's so many, many challenges that, you know, the average um, musician in Nigeria or artist in Nigeria, you know, currently um, being faced with. But I think chief um, of, of, of that would be the knowledge gap. Um, knowledge gap being, I mean, the B side to that would be um, misinformation as well. So you find a lot of people, I mean, the number of assumptions as to what are the key drivers to, um, you know, successful um, career, you know, how, you know, to launch, you know, a successful campaign, and whether it is music release, whatever. I mean, for the longest time, it was a problem in Nigeria for anyone to admit that someone which is song. I mean, a lot of people still have that problem to date right now. So you have, um, um, huge knowledge gap. Um, those who know, I mean, those who seem to have a bit of that knowledge are not like independent structure that can help like what this is doing now. There are usually structures that are tied to, you know, individual businesses, you know, people who have that, you know, opportunity. And then you find a small circle who knows exactly how to properly go about, you know, um, saying things. That for me has been one of the biggest problems. And you find out that as soon as we find a talent or, or, or team, you know, that somehow find a way to solve that problem by knowing exactly what to do, who to meet, how to go about this stuff, you see the difference. You find, oh, these guys are doing more, these guys are doing better, this, this team's excelling. It's just the knowledge, you know, um, that's, that's chief of it. Um, another thing that, you know, that's very obvious is the economics, finance. Um, it is sad, but it's, it's reality. Um, the poverty rate, you know, in, in Nigeria is, is such a problem that even at this point, and you just can't even tell those who are really, um, you know, meant to do this music thing. Because it seems to be a way where a number of young people seem to have found some, you know, level head, some level of comfort of some sort. You find a lot of people running into it. You know, um, then when you look at the entire value chain, you know, um, for every I mean, music campaign or whatever, you see that there is, it's expensive, you know, for you to put out the quality of music that you really want to put out, um, get the um, um, necessary um, um, structures that you need in place. Um, that need to be sort of taken out or, or surmounted for us to stand any chance. So sorry about that, guys. To have the best chance of action. Very little, like, so to speak, outlet you can actually make it happen. But you know, this whole business that you need anymore. You know, I'm a firm believer in your socials. I'm a firm believer in you know YouTube and things like that. And there are mechanisms to put music up without it costs you any money. You know, and if 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 you really believe in the music that you're making, I believe you can make videos with your phone, you know, and you could be hungrier and more passionate than someone and it'll find its way. But I feel like you gotta have that faith and that hustle, you know, to kind of make it work because there's territories all over the world that feel like they don't have resources either for their lack of relationship development, things like that you know, not knowing where events are to show up and, and start building relationships. But I think we're at a place right now where you can kind of do it from where you stand and gather up enough energy that other people will want to know who you are, you know, but you have to have that faith and, and, and not feel like, you know, it's this sprint that's going to get you there overnight. 
You know, it's very rare that people make it overnight. There's always a story that you don't know about them that they tried long before you saw them. So I feel like it's the patience and the resilience, you know, is, is what it's always going to take when you're talking about competitive industries. And music is a competitive industry worldwide. So I, I, really, I really believe that it takes very hard, diligent work and focus on the quality. You know, focus on the quality of your music. Don't just put anything out. Make sure that you understand what you're putting out is the hottest that you have right now. You know, and the next thing that you put out, make sure it's just as hot, if not hotter, but don't put it out. Because once people understand that you can consistently make hot stuff, then other folks who want to call you features, that can help grow you, that can grow the awareness. You know, there may be companies that call or even a manager that calls and say, wow, this kid is out here really doing it alone, but I like what they're doing. Let me figure out how to reach out to them. You know, so there's no one way to make it, you know, um, but there's one thing that's in common with success and it's hard work. Very well said, uh, Mark. I think that maybe the, the most important thing to extract from what you've said um, is actually um, the reality that in a population of 200 million people where there exists less than five viable record companies, um, it, it's pointless hoping to get signed. You know, hinging your hope to have a music career on getting signed is, is almost, you know, nonsensical. It's almost hoping against hope. So you've got to believe that you've got the tools to use. You mentioned the mobile phone, for instance, and just, you know, the, the share um, uh, sort of uh, power that it gives you to do stuff on your, on your own. And um, what social this, this, for you as well. This is your, this is your first partner. Mm, 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 mm. This is your first partner. This is the thing that you can do from home. This is your first partner. You can download studio gear into this thing. You can download beat making stuff into this thing, apps that help you make beats. You know, everything is right here now, you know? And if you apply it, then it's gonna help you evolve from where you are to where you wanna be. But you can't ignore this for looking at big things. You know, you can't say, I gotta be in a big studio. I gotta be here. I gotta have all this camera equipment. I've gotta have this. It starts off with this, and you work your way out. But this is what can get you get you out of the mud, as we would speak over here. You know, this will get you out of the mud right here. This is this is that one thing that will hustle with you if you use it properly. You know, so I suggest that people not underestimate the value of mobile and how it can take you around the world, not only with making the music but pushing your music. Fantastic. Thanks a lot, Mark. Um, I'll just basically go through some of the, the um, comments in the chat box. Um, Timmy says, hi, everyone. I'm Matthew. Thank God. Alon Timmy Lane from Ibado. I'm a rapper, and I'm really glad to be part of this. Benita says, my name is Isinde Benita. I'm the CEO of Soul Lyrics Media, an online platform for music promotion and marketing. Um, I'm an aspiring music business coach. I hope to gain good knowledge of the music business, how to conquer the African market and then the world at large. Femi says, I'm, I am Femi, I'm into ENR. I would love to learn more about music business. Miss Eva Johnson says, experienced panelist on the future of music, especially for independent artists. Miss Eva Johnson is a multidisciplinary artist, a rapper, a singer, an actor, and a dancer. And um, Andy says, my name is Andrea. I'm an artist, manager, rapper. I hope to learn how to be better in music business. Anike says, um, hello, I'm Anike, a songwriter and a singer, a content creator and a new artist. I look forward to getting knowledge about music business and its opportunities. Onyema Courage says, um, I'm, 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 I'm in, into a &R, talent management and PR strategy. Um, sorry, can you can we have the participants muted, please? Okay, uh, quite quite a number of I mean uh, quite a lot of uh, um, responses to get through, but I, I'll try. Um, Mercy says 
Um, my name is Mercy. Um, I'm a music, music artist, always looking to learn all I can to have and sustain a successful career. So I'll just press pause there and go back to uh, Fabian. But uh, let's check quickly if Rabbi is back. Rabbi, are you back on the call? Oh, yes, sir. Okay, Rabbi is back. Oh, okay. Cool. So um, I'm going to come back to you after Fabian because I think that uh, Mark has sort of um, helped to, to answer the question that you were asked. Your, your network was not, not great, so yeah. for the most part, we couldn't hear what you Another major challenge. <laughs> it's either it's crap or sometimes. Yeah. So, Fabian, um, picking up from where uh, Mark sort of left off, speaking about just what you can do with the device or the instrument or the, with the mobile phone, or the equipment that the mobile phone has become, um, how does an artist effectively leverage digital platforms? So I'm talking for starters, social media platforms, your TikToks, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, and now, now to um, the, the music platforms like iTunes, like Spotify, uh, Tidal, all of those. What, what, is there a strategy to how you effectively leverage these platforms for success, especially from the standpoint of um, someone who's just starting out? Okay, so um, I, can, I can speak about this for hours because this is what I'm doing every day. <laughs> so stop me if I'm too long. <laughs> um, so I think the first step, because now the, I think the main goal for artists now is to have numbers on, on, on social media, especially on Instagram and uh, on this piece in terms of streaming. So I think the thing is, so many artists, they're going to buy fake followers, for example, on Instagram or fake streams. And this is something that you don't need to do. It's, it's more about quality than quantity. It's more important to have a small fan base, but a small fan base who will consume your music than a big fan base. Like, for example, you have like one million followers on Instagram, but nobody is listening to your music and you only have like... 5,000 streams on Spotify and 2,000 views on, on, on YouTube. So the first step is to work on your branding on social media to show, to find the right balance between your daily content, to introduce yourself as a person, as an artist, and also like the marketing content, how you're going to drive your social media audience to the DSPs. Uh, so for this, you need to work like, like, like with a team, with someone like me who's going to help you to, 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 to work on a plan. But the branding on social media is very important because when you speak with DSPs, or, so when I say DSPs or the digital streaming platform like Spotify, Apple, or when you speak like big radios, for example, in the UK, the BBC, the first thing, the first thing they're going to check, it's, 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 it's your Instagram. So if you don't have like a good branding on your social, or if you don't post like content like every week or sometimes even every day, you're not gonna sell your, 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 your music uh, to a music professional. So just make sure that when we go on your Instagram profile, we can see that you are proactive, that you work, as Mark said, you can, you, can rock, you can work on very basic content on Instagram stories, on Reels, on YouTube, on TikTok to show how you record a track, how you prepare a show uh, when you meet another artist, just to show that you are, pro, you are proactive. Because now the DSPs is not people think when you pitch a track to editors or marketing team in in, at the DSPs, it's only about the music, but the music is only one part because when you pitch a track, you need to send, of course, the music, but you also need to share the marketing plan and what is the plan on the long term. So, if, for example, you send your pitch to TikTok because they do playlists as well, but you are not active on the platform, they are not going to support your music. So, just make sure that all your profiles are 
perfect, nice profile pictures, nice, nice header, create your own playlist as well, your favorite track at the moment, just to show to the platform that you are involved on the platform. And also, when your song is out, don't forget to create content like, hey, my new single is available on Spotify, swipe up, because you might think that the, the marketing and the editor's team at Spotify, they don't check this, but they do. Like you can see when you tag, even myself, when I have a playlist for an artist, I do a story on, on my Instagram, I tag the platform, I mention the platform, and I can see that they check. And sometimes they contact me and say, oh, we love this song, we're gonna show more love to, you, to, 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 to your artist next week. So it's all about content. So for the DSPs, you really need to, to, to I mean, on the social media, you need to, to build the relation with your audience. And on the DSP, you need to build the relation with the editors, even if you are not in contact with them every day, uh, because they prefer to deal with the label or the distributor or someone like me. Um, you have to show them that you are promoting their platform as well. It's 50-50. It's, it's, it's so it's just like a long, same thing, it's a long-term process. Um, you also need, I think, to find the right distribution company who believes in your project. Because if you want to get some playlists, uh, it's very competitive. There is, at the end, there is not a lot of playlists when you check compared to the number of songs that we can hear every, every day or every week. So just make sure that, and I'm totally agree with Mark, that your music is on point, your branding is on point, and you don't drop a track just because you need to drop a track. Drop a track when everything is ready and when you have a plan on the long term. Um, and this is how you're gonna build the relation um, with, 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 with the DSPs. And also show them that you have an environment around your project. So in terms of media, in terms of like if your music video uh, is on MTV, is on BIT, um, if your, your track is played on a radio station, even a small radio station, tell them, show them on your social media because you need to start with something, with, with something. For example, someone like Dua Lipa, nobody wanted to support Dua Lipa three or four years before she, she had like a first number one hit. I was thinking about this with Deezer UK last year. But just because the team was pushing every day, Deezer and YouTube in the UK, they were like, okay, we're gonna give a chance to this girl and now she's like the biggest pop star of the year. So, but it's just a long-term process. And don't think because you have a team, your team is gonna do everything for you. You can have the best team in the world but if you don't do the job, as Mark said, with your phone or everything, it's not going to work. You have to do the work. You give us the assets and we, and we, and we promote the assets to, to, to our partners. Wow. Um, <sighs> Sorry, it was a bit too I'm, long, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. I was going to say, I'm to think we should, have, we should have charged a fee for this session. <laughs> <laughs> Because of the gems that you're dropping, um, it, it's so, I mean, revealing um, just how sometimes the basic things that people have in their possession that they take for granted are the very things that they need to leverage to get to where they, they need to be. So, um, what the, in summary, what I get from what you say is that um, artists must take responsibility and be intentional for their social media handles because... Um, you may think that, well, I only have 1,000 followers, but it's better to have 1,000 followers that are engaging with your content than a million followers who are hardly ever engaging with your content. And then you need to... And that takes persistence. It takes you having something that looks, some, something close like to an impressive body of work because nobody's going to help an artist who put out one record in January and didn't have anything else till two years later. Um, and has a bunch of meaningless pictures and posts from parties um, filling up their social media <laughs> media handle. So, <sighs> incredible stuff, incredible. Thank, thanks, Fabian. Um, that was really, really um, um, eye-opening, I must say. Um, I'll go back to Rabbi, but before then, let me read a few more um, responses from the chat box. 
Um, Emmanuel Jayola says, I'm a voice coach. Um, Tuchuku says, I can't hear anyone's voice. Um, I hope you can hear us now because we can hear everyone else. At least I can hear all the panelists and I, I have a reason to believe that uh, the participants can, can hear us as well. Um, okay, so I think Tito has helped um, Tuchuku to resolve uh, uh, the challenge. Okay. Yeah. We got We have to pull Rabbi back up. I'm looking at Rabbi down below. Um, <laughs> Rabbi, can you can you hear us? Can you see us? Yeah, I can see you. Oh, okay. Okay. So, um, straight straight back to Rabbi then. Um, so we hear all of this text that um, up and coming artists are supposed to take: how to build following on social media, how to build relationships with DSPs how to uh, shop and all that. But at the end of the day, you touched on something earlier, which is key, which is the economic reality of Nigeria and the need that, you know, or the pressure that that puts on artists to want to make ends meet and stay alive, make money, pay bills. Those are everyday realities that come in the way of you being able to do some of these things that Fabian and Mark have articulated quite brilliantly. Um, based on your knowledge of our industry, what are the key areas that young up-and-coming artists can focus on to make money to sustain themselves until that time when they really blow? Um, first of all, I'd like to um, say that, you know, uh, Mark said something which was very key while he was um, talking a while ago on um, how um, when you get to, you know, to the uh, music space and whatnot, um, yes, it's very competitive, as obviously everyone can see, um, but also it's not something you expect to happen overnight. Um, and when we um, look at even, I mean, between Mark and Fabian, everyone has made references to um, our cell phones, you know, and how important they are. But because everything is so um, on the internet right now, it still boils down to data, where you have people, you know, in a country where you know, the internet, the cost of data is such, you know, um, internet data is such, you know, um, it is so expensive um, for the common and average person to um, constantly afford and stay um, that active. But that's, that, that, that aside, so um, answer the question that you asked. There are things I tell people, once you're honest to yourself, you know, you tend to help yourself. First of all, what are your core, what's really are your core strengths? Even if within the entertainment, the music space or the entertainment industry, the opportunities that you can begin to look at, you know, before you achieve the so-called blow, and also outside the entertainment industry as well. Um, for instance, what are your strengths? If your strengths are in songwriting, why don't you look at people, you know, find people who might need help in that, you know, um, that space and begin to look at um, how you can be of help and then make some money within, you know, that also, I mean, these days it happens. People write songs, make songs, and then put up for sale, and they're making money from it. You know, it doesn't have to be your own song. Um, others are. So, so, um, the whole of your horses. Let me just try and emphasize on that point, just in case they missed it. So, what you are saying is that an artist who doesn't have a big name yet yeah. can make money from writing music and selling to big name artists in yeah. Nigeria today. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, oh. exactly. I mean, I, I know a number of people who, who pretty much that's what they do right now. And I mean, they write songs to some of the big names that we know, and then you know they get paid. You know, still not blown per se. I mean, again, maybe for their for their benefit again. Um, it might sound a bit simplistic or oversimplifying it to put it in this way. But what specific step can a brilliant songwriter who is in Akutia Juma? I know disrespect to the area. I just mentioned the name. Yeah. Remote area. Does the person have to be able to pitch a song they've written to a Tiwa Savage who lives in Lekki? How do they make that connect? How do they, how do they reach out? How do they get noticed? So, first of all, the internet is such an amazing space. Um, and social media right now has everyone connected to everyone. Um, I do know that um, at some level, um, a number of um, factors come into play in terms of trust, credibility. Um, nobody wants to get involved with someone and then at the end of the day, they, they have a lawsuit slammed at them or something. Um, so you necessarily have to begin to 
um, you know, um, find your way around um, such people. And you can begin with producers they work with. You can produce, you can uh, move on to um, managers that you know they work with. You can, these are, you can send them DMs, you know. The uh, interesting thing is that I've come to realize about celebrities, they do read their DMs, <laughs> you know. Um, they just don't respond to everyone, <laughs> you know. So, um, and, and because they are always constantly in need, um, you can begin. Um, you can start by making, you know, um, you can begin by doing free stuff for people to, um, you know, get to see what you can do. Of course, ensuring that your paperwork are intact. Um, all these are some things you can, uh, some ways that you can begin to um, find your way um, out there. Like again, like I said, the internet is such a, a massive space. There are platforms where people can literally go put their work up there and say, you know, I'm trying to sell this, you know, just a bit of it. Brilliant, brilliant. And I can confirm from experience that um, it is actually possible and it's happening that young up and coming artists are sending records to established artists via social media yeah, and, and they, are getting responses. <laughs> they are getting responses. Another yeah. thing also is it is not a crime for anyone who is aspiring to be a major celebrity to go get skill sets go learn something you know get some something that you know can help you you know i mean look the number of artists we know who are not they can't do music anymore not because they don't love it because you know age is not on the side you know the sound is no longer what people are like pretty much getting for anymore so when you get to that point what do you do so um, it's not a crime, you know, some people, maybe because of ego, I don't know, would always insist that it's not within this space, you know. I mean, I, I think you can pick up something that can help you, you know. Um, we, we do know of um, artists who are doctors, those who are, you know, um, make shoes, whatever. And they're doing well. Exactly. Some of them are photographers, some of them are, you know, and they're doing, doing very well. So, yeah, I, I think... You know, once you're honest with yourself, it's, it's just what it is. Okay, there's always a way when there's a will, they say. Um, so, back to Mark. Um, so, dreams are free. Everyone can dream. <laughs> but in between, you know, having that big dream and, and delivering on it, there's a, there's a huge gap. Um, I just wanted you to articulate as succinctly as possible um, how a guy in Gidi, as we like to call Lagos, Las Gidi, um, can translate his dream from Gidi to the Grammys. How, how does he, I mean, Burna just won the Grammy, so it's brought it home even closer to the Nigerian. Um, it's possible. We can be celebrated on the biggest stages in the world. How do you yeah. make <laughs> money that appeals to the international ma market? How do you have an answer the question of quality locally. How do you now sort of build a pipeline of your music to the international audience to the point where you start to get international recognition, you start to get international bookings, you start making money um, and, and, and bagging the awards? Oh, uh, what? Well, number one, sacrifice, right? You know, when you look at Burner's business, for instance, like, I don't, I don't know if Burner's ever even opened up for anyone. You know, and I'm not saying that that's impossible, you know, or that's something that everyone should do, but they just built it brick by brick, you know, no crazy expectations. You know, it's not like it was always at this level. So people can't look at where he is now and be like, you know, this guy popped up out of nowhere and he's successful. And then we also have to realize that, you know, the previous year he lost the Grammy. The year before that, they didn't even know who he was. So it, again, it's the work, 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 work. Everyone's not going to become an international artist. We have to be honest with that, you know, and there's nothing wrong with that either because you could be a, lo you could be a local success that's doing very well. There's a lot of artists that may not get out of the United States, for instance, but they do very well within the confines of where they are because they figured out other businesses to build off of it, their merchandise business. You know, they may have an events business and other things that they use their popularity to build that scale that they may not be able to get around the rest of the world. 
And then sometimes, you know, this this lucky day comes up that they make this right record or they do this right collaboration that takes them, you know, into these other spaces. And I think that's how you utilize it. I think you take your space, you get as strong as you possibly can in your space. And I feel like that can become a trade-off, you know, for people in other spaces that want to get in yours. And that's the importance of having home is that if you build that foundation at home, then you become one of those people that say, hey, I need to, if I want to get in Lagos or Nigeria, I need to get with this person. You know, I need to do a collaboration with this person. But inside of that, why they're collaborating with you, you need to figure out how does that help you in their territory, you know, and develop relationships, not just transactions, you know, because relationships going to last you a lot longer. So it's, it's a brick by brick thing, man. I feel like you shouldn't turn down shows early. I think you should do as many, many shows as possible to start building your audience. And then as things go, even if you're not a big international star, you'll have enough capital to actually promote your own shows. So where mm-hmm. someone else may be missing a couple bucks from having a promoter, you'll be gaining that same capital by doing it yourself, you know, once you've built it up. So there's a, there's a million ways to skin a cat, but I think where you are would dictate what your possibilities are. Mm. Wow. Thank you very much, Mark. Well articulated. I think um, as you were speaking, something you know pop, popped to mind, um, and it's something I, I picked up in the book I was reading uh, recently, um, which talks about you know the ten thousand hour rule uh, for competence. Uh, Malcolm Gladwell, uh, Malcolm Gladwell's um, outlier book, um, and he referenced how the Beatles became so good by playing. Uh, in Hamburg, Germany, um, almost on a weekly basis at, you know, a, a, a bar where they needed to play for several hours, um, which at the time wasn't the practice in, 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 in mainstream um, yeah. England. Yeah. Um, today, you know. today they call it a residency, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so you serve the residency somewhere to build the competence that you need to thrive um, at the next level. So... And that's got to be the focus because a lot of times young artists or young talent generally get frustrated by not being able to harness the next level as quickly as they want to, that they stop focusing on just the goodness that surrounds them where they are and they yeah. need to continue to get better where they are. Well, you, well, you know, speed, 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 speed kills, you know, <laughs> <laughs> so speed can kill your career too. You know, so I, I suggest to anyone, just, just slow it down. You know, that concept with the Beatles, that concept, the residency works. You could be on a corner every Friday and start garnering attention. If you're really good, people say, yo, this guy's been, he's back again Friday. Next thing you know, they say, yo, Friday, I'm going over to such and such because you know that person will be there. So it's like, how do you, how do you, and that right there won't cost you anything. Right. Mm. So it's about it's your desire. Right. But it's also like humility, because some people want to be big so so fast that they don't want to do the small things and, mm. and, and accept where you are right now. Right. And when you don't accept where you are right now, you won't grow. So there's nothing wrong with taking life cycle, crawl, walk, run. And then fly someday. <laughs> and then fly. Even if you have to get a plane fly <laughs> you know but you're still flying you know it might not be your wings but you're still up there but it's a, it's a process and you can't change the evolution of what it takes to get wow absolutely um couldn't agree more uh, mark okay um so guys we're we're hitting the home stretch um and i just wanted to from you that the next or the next half hour that um, is dedicated to the Q and A's. So whatever questions you want to ask, please just start dropping them in the in the chat box now. That's what um, the five o'clock hour local time in, in Lagos, Nigeria, is meant for. It's like a twenty minute window, so you, we can ask your questions to the panelists, and they can respond within that that window, and then we wrap. Um, I have one more question um, for Fabian. And that question is, 
me. Sorry, can, guys, can you put your microphone on, on mute if you're not speaking? One of the questions I've been asked most frequently since I've been in this game, uh, Fabian, is the one I'm asking you right now, which is, what is the secret to longevity in this game? What makes the difference between um, a guy or a lot of guys that we refer to as, as flashes in the pan, or in the, name, in, the, in the case of an individual, a flash in the pan, and the guy who stays around 20, 30, 40, 40 years, you know, what, what makes the difference? I think if you, the first thing I think is to have respect for your team, for your fans, for the media and for everyone. If you have the right attitude with, with everyone, you're going to get a lot of people in your pocket. If you arrive, then this is, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say this, but there is a new generation of artists. They think because someone, just because one or two people told them that they have a great project, they are talented, they start to think they are the next biggest star in the world and they start to be very rude or they want to get everything now. And if you don't, if you tell them no, or if you don't do what they want, they will start to be like very, very rude or very aggressive. And unfortunately, it's happening all the time. And you have to understand, as a, first of all, as a new artist, when someone accepts to work with you, um, it's, it's a very good sign. And you have to, to have respect for this person. Because sometimes, for my, if I take my example, I receive a lot of projects from new artists, but I can't accept everyone. And sometimes I'm going to say, okay, you really want to work? Let's, let's work together. But after two or three months, you can hear like, oh, I'm not happy with your job, or my project is not a priority for you, or you do this, you should not do this, etc. So you have to trust people. You have to be nice with people, and also you have to trust in your project, because so many artists, they don't trust in their projects. And sometimes I'm feeling like I, I'm putting more energy in the project as a project manager, and sometimes I think the artist should put more, like, should have more ambition, you know? And I think you have to be proud of your, of your music. This is your project. This is like, it's, it's, it's like your baby. So if you don't believe in your project, nobody will. And also the attitude with everyone. When you have an interview with someone, you arrive 10 minutes earlier, not 10 minutes later, and you don't have any excuses because if you have like, as a new artist, it's very difficult to book articles, live session, interview, or if they have just a feature on the website. If you have like two or three articles per month from one release as a new artist, it's a miracle. Um, so when you have this one interview in the month, you really need to be on time. You need to prepare your interview. You know who is the journalist. You check on LinkedIn, you check on Instagram, on Twitter. You prepare your answers because you know what kind of question they're going to ask. And same thing, your branding is on top. So right attitude, nice look, everything is on point. And you, and you pay attention to everyone. And when you work with someone, you listen to advices. Because some artists, they think they know everything, but they don't. Like for my example, when I work with so many artists, they think like breaking a project, it's only DSP and PR. And I'm like, no, the first things to do is your marketing strategy. If you don't have a good strategy, it's not going to work. You're not going to get playlists. You're, gonna, you're not going to get articles. And as you said, maybe you're going to have one success, but on long term, it's not going to work. And the last thing is you have to think on long term, not on short term. Maybe, maybe it's not going to work for six months. Maybe the first songs, you're not going to get results. A lot of results. Your song maybe is going to be on the radio. And the third one, again, no results at all. It's a lot of up and downs. And you can see this with big pop stars. And as I said before, I work like with a lot of big pop star when I was working for, for the radio station in France, NRG. And you can see like all the biggest star, like, uh, like Jennifer Lopez, she, she came, Prince, um, Maria Carey, everybody, they were super nice, very humble, 
So I think as an artist, you have to be humble. Even if your song is number one in the charts, you have to be who you are and you have to be nice with everyone. Never lose this. You know, money is one thing, but I think your personality is the most important thing in this industry. Like if you check someone like Sierra, I think it's a good example. She doesn't sell a lot of records anymore, but every time she's dropping a song, she has a lot of support from the media and the radios and the big ceremonies. Because one of my friends worked with her and she told me she's always on time. She has respect for the journalists. So every time she drops something, they want to help her to promote her music. So this is what you have to do, like amability, I think. Um, believe in yourself and think on long term. Fantastic. I think you touched on a very important point there, which can get a bit confusing or modeled up for uh, the Gen Zites, if I can call them that, um, which is the belief that for you to be a star, there's some sort of attitude and a lot of times negative attitude that, that you need to carry. You know, you have to be a snob, you have to be um, downright rude or disrespectful. And, and that's, that's what actually emphasizes the level of your star power. And at the end of the day, um, we're all human and we appreciate to be treated in a certain way. There's a saying that people don't maybe remember what you say to them or what you do to them but they always remember how you make them feel. Um, so it wouldn't matter to me if you are whiskey or Davido. Um, if you break my, my, my car window, um, you're not gonna ex elicit a smile or, or, or laughter from me. Um, if, 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 if you slap me, you're not gonna get me dancing. Um, so kindness or, or being a, a genuinely pleasant human being is always going to sell. That's probably what's, what's gonna keep you you know, in people's um, goodwill or enjoying people's goodwill over time, such that when the quality of your music isn't necessarily the best anymore, at least the goodwill can sustain you. You're still getting booked. People are still reaching out for projects because they know, as you said, that when uh, call time is 7 a.m., they wouldn't have to wait for you a minute longer or later than 7 a.m., you will be there. Um, and it's my experience, I haven't worked extensively in, in the you know, brand advertising and marketing communication spaces where we're sitting down at those decision-making tables and you're asking, who are we signing as an ambassador for this brand? And people start popping those names. And straight away, you're, you're hearing people say from their past experiences, no way, we can't work with this one. Um, two years ago, I tried to work with them. He stood us up for three hours, didn't show up. When he showed up, there was no apology. And that's how people miss several millions of naira in opportunity exactly because you know of their attitude so um it's never going to be cool to be rude um or, or you know excuse my french to be an asshole um yeah. it's never going to be cool and it's not a currency within the music space or the entertainment space whoever told you that if you ever you know believed it uh, told you a lie and and we've got to reorientate people and let them know that yeah where um, um, competence probably can't take you, character maybe can take you there. Okay. Um, and we are so all in the have... same boat at the end. At the end, we yeah. are all in the same boat. So the artist the needs the media, the media needs the artist, and the project manager needs the artist. Like the same, yeah, mm -hmm. we are all on the same boat. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so um, I'm going to ask Green's question to Rabbi. Uh, Green says, looking at the next 10 years in the music industry, what areas that are least explored right now, or maybe are not even you know, obvious to anyone yet, will be really big? So he's forward thinking, he's forward planning. Green wants to know, where should I focus my energies for the next 10 years? I, I think it will be fair to just and so take a stab at this um i mean again i'd say uh, it depends on what the question is is he speaking from the nigerian perspective or is he speaking globally in terms of uh, we say it's a global game so i mean where are the opportunities and if there are specific or peculiar opportunities in nigeria you can speak to those as well so i'd say because um i'll speak from year out you know um um one of the um one of the opportunities i see that is really massive right now in 
um, globally for every Nigerian you know, creative is, first of all, one thing is for sure, we do have global attention right now. That's a huge opportunity. Um, we have people looking at, looking at our space right now. People are listening to us. People, people are checking out our work. People are, and that's a massive opportunity. It means that anyone who's really creative, who's talented, who's really hardworking, has like a huge, I'll say, focus a lot on, you know, putting out a whole lot of content, quality content, like Mark said. If it's not worth going out, then there's no point, you know. Um, putting out quality content, you know, and ensure that that's going out. Also, there's a huge opportunity right now globally when you look at it. I mean, following um, from, um, you know, the, um, from the entire movement that's going on in from the U.S. across the world about the black story, about the African story. I think it's a huge opportunity for everyone, you know, even in Africa to begin to um, drive a narrative you know, um, about Africa, Africa, the richness of the, the, richness of the culture, um, the um, vast opportunity, the um, um, richness of talent that we have. Um, also, a lot of people are not saying this, but Bono just won a Grammy. What that means is that it's possible, and there are more Grammys to be snatched, you know, from this part of the world. So people definitely, um, I'd say, um, walk more on talent and putting your work out there because the world is watching. Um, also, in terms of collaboration, Mark said the same thing as well, and I think um, um, Fabian also um, mentioned a few things within that line. So, um, collaboration. Um, there are new territories that one can begin to look at. Um, I, mean, the, I mean, the Asian community, you know, the um, the, the collaborations, you know, breaking into um, those, um, you can begin to develop new sound, like Afro beats and some Latino vibe, we've seen a lot of that recently, um, you know, even the Arab sound and the Afro beat sound, I mean, there are areas that are yet to be tapped, you know, and I mean, it's like, you know, I mean, they say dogs are like man's best friend, but we've seen a number of breed, we've seen how, you know, we've had mixed breed and how this mixed breed have grown over time to become, um, you know, a huge um, acceptable um, pets at home. The same thing can happen with music, how we can begin to cross sound together, you know, fuse sound from different, you know, create something new, you know, and still, you know, maintain your originality. I'd say these are like the immediate opportunities that I see, and I think we can begin to jump on. All right, thanks, Robert. Fabian? Can you repeat the, the question, please? So what are the, the big opportunities um, to focus on for the next, say, five to 10 years? Yeah, I would say, I, I would say the same thing. Like, I think like social medias, uh, like I think social medias, like if you think like 20 years ago, the artists, they didn't have this opportunity. Like if she didn't get like um, a, a record deal or anything, uh, you couldn't have visibility. Uh, now, thanks to social media, you can create your, yeah, like your own media at the end. Uh, you, you, you can do your own live session. You can do your own Q&A with your fans. You don't need a journalist. YouTube, as Mark said, it's a, like, this is like the biggest video platform now. Um, concerts, uh, just to grow uh, like your audience, your numbers on DSP, you have to think when, a, when someone is going to a concert, maybe he doesn't know you before, and when you come, he will come back home, he will listen to your music, so you will have maybe like 100 new followers on Spotify after your concert. Um, and yes, the content and the relationship, I, I, I also think thanks to social media, you can connect with so many people in the world. Uh, and especially during this crazy year, this year and last year, I think people are more open-minded now to meet new people. Uh, need to travel. Uh, we can do as we are doing today. So I think the networking is very important as well. And I think even the, the industry is more competitive now compared to 20 years ago. Uh, I think artists, they have more opportunities today um, to, 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 to break a project.
No, we can't hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah um, I'll say thank you very much, uh, Fabian, for layering um, more knowledge on what um, Rabbi already said uh, regarding what opportunities um, artists should focus on for the next 10 years within the industry. So I'm just uh, scrolling through the, the chat box and um, I think, yeah, the next question is from Femi. Um, he says, please, a lot of upcoming artists are finding, finding it hard to get up there just because of funds. So he um, picks out the lack of access to funding um, as, as a challenge. He says, how then can, can we beat this challenge? Um, again, with, with um, a firm understanding of the, the, the native peculiarities of the Nigerian environment. Um, maybe Rabbi should go first and then I'll take Fabian. How do artists access much needed funding in the Nigeria of today? Well, I mean, <laughs> to, be, to begin with, right, if you, um, you know, it was interesting when um, Fabian and um, Matt were, uh, were talking about the importance of your cell phone. It actually means that um, the most important piece of equipment or capital that you might terms of funding you already have, you know, in the device that's in your hand. I think the first thing you want to also understand is that not, um, it's not every funding or capital that is necessarily money. Um, you can begin with the ones that's not really money. Other currencies that you probably might have, for instance, you already have an existing cell phone in your hand, then begin with your immediate network. Who are the people around? Um, you know, um, I mean, there are instances, but that you gave one yourself, as you guys, the Beatles as well. You know, begin to um, perform and showcase your talent within, you know, it grows, you, you grow up. We, we all know how hard it is in the country, but a number of people have made it, have, you know, tried very hard to get out there, even without the same funding. People who, I mean, you hear stories, I heard one time of um, someone from, in very old artist, I think, um, how he would trek from, Jigule to NTA just to get, you know, <laughs> you know, um, get promoted. Um, and he would do it and then get there, do his whatever interview and walk back the same way. So a number of people have found a way around it. So I'd say um, begin with what you have, be consistent, um, ensure that what you're putting out is your very best and seize every opportunity and every moment. One thing is for sure, you will be heard. Okay, thanks, um, Rabbi. Before I go to Fabian, let me just add that um, the difficulty accessing funding um, in Nigeria has been ob obviously more complicated by the pandemic. Um, the, econo the economy has, has constricted a bit more, um, well, and that's putting it, you know, sort of mildly. It's not a bit more. Um, the economy has pretty much, you know, uh, gotten to a, a point of near collapse. Um, and so with less disposable income, uh, people are less willing to spend on, on music. And added on to that is the, the restriction to physical gatherings. Um, so guys probably would have been earning a little from playing, you know, local shows or shows within their vicinity. You can't even do that at the moment. So it becomes incredibly um, uh, difficult. Um, hence, I believe the need or the sort of dependency on um, record labels, because the idea is that when you get signed, <laughs> The record label takes responsibility over you. At least they put you in a house. Sometimes they buy you a car. Um, they, they, they give you some sort of allowance with which you can you know, run your life. Um, that's if you're not you know, privileged to come from an okay family or from a you know, well-to-do family. Um, so having laid all of these you know, sort of, uh, well, I, I, I refuse to call them foundations, but sort of, um, background yeah Fabian um, what do you foresee and again based on your experience from where things work differently what do you foresee are the, the ways that Nigerians sidestep some of these challenges and be able to raise funding a case in point the concept of crowdfunding projects is gaining grounds in Europe and America is that something that we should be looking to do? If you have a fan base of 1,000 people, can you, put, you know, possibly or potentially go to them and say, guys, I have this next, next project that you can buy into. If each of you would give me 
a thousand naira. Um, this is the much that you can get back as returns. Is that something that can become a tangible opportunity or tangible means of fundraising for the Nigerian creative in the short while? Well, you know, this is like, you can do this. Like, I, I still have a business in France and I have so many French artists, they do this at the moment. So they have like, a, like not necessarily, as you said, a big fan base on, 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 on social or on YouTube, but sometimes you don't realize how the fans, they love your music and how much they love you. Um, so they are ready like, to give you maybe 500 pounds, uh, I speak in pounds or euros, but 500 pounds or 500 euros, and five, you know, 50 maybe, not 500, <laughs> 50, oh, sorry, just one minute. I'm so sorry. While we're waiting for Fabian to return, let me just apologize um, on behalf of um, Mark, who's had to drop off. Um, we had an emergency from work, so to um, go respond to it. But um, I had an amazing time listening to him, and I believe the same um, is true for you guys. So, um, But if you have any Mark-specific questions, please um, drop them in the chat box, and um, we'll get them across to him, and he'll answer them, and we'll we'll get them um, across you. And you can easily just follow him on, on Instagram. Um, his, I think his handle is his name, Mark Byers, M-A-R-C-B-Y-E-R-S, Mark Byers. Um, so Mark has had to leave. I was apologizing uh, Fabian on his behalf. So you can carry on. Sorry, someone was knocking at the door at the same time. Um, so yeah, so I was saying that like, so many artists, uh, they have like strong, like not strong fan base, but the artists sometimes they, they are very, I mean the fan base is very happy to help artists to to like they want to give some money to the to the artist to like to record a new song or to shoot a music video and nowadays like it's very cheap sometimes to shoot a music video um, so if you have like one thousand art like one thousand followers on Instagram and everybody is giving you like. 30 pounds, for example, you can, it's, it's quite a lot of money and you can pay a PR or you can pay um, a, a, a director to shoot a music video. All these things are, are cheap. And also you can go on a few websites. Uh, for example, in some, like you have so many students, um, so many like uh, people who want to break this industry, but more, like on the creative side um, and they are looking like to work with new artists to create like some artwork and some music video for free. Um, so you can, you, you can work with, this, with these people at the beginning and this is how you can start to build the team because maybe at the beginning they will, they will work for free for you but maybe thanks to their content you will start to make money and you will be able to pay them on long term as I said always, long, hashtag long term. Uh, and they would be your first team. It's like, it's like you know, uh, Michael Bublé, um, like he's one of the biggest artists in, in, in America and his, his manager found him like on, on a boat, he was singing and they built everything together at the beginning. So this is what you can do with, um, with, with, with your fan base um, as well. And also like you can also work with brands because like so many brands now they are looking to to get some um like how do you call this like but they are looking to work with artists to represent the brand and sometimes sometimes okay. like with i have a few a few clients they only have they only have like three thousand followers uh and the brands are completely then just to promote like like like, like, like some clothes, some perfumes, and they give a little bit of money as well. So thanks to this money, you can pay someone um, to do your PR or to a, a music distribution company. Same thing if your branding is good on social media, if you have great music, and if you can prove that you have a, 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 like a strategy on the, on the long term, if they believe in your project, they can give you a little bit of money. It's very complicated now since uh, the COVID and the virus, uh, but I'm sure from next year it will, it will happen again. Mm. 
I think, um, Fabian, you make a fantastic point there. Um, one of the new trends in Nigeria is that brands are moving away from signing big name celebrities as ambassadors and investing instead in micro influencers who have um, 3,000, 4,000, 20,000, some maybe 50,000 followers. Um, and that's because research has proven that um, consumers believe more what micro influencers who don't have several millions of followers um, say when they endorse pro products um, over what celebrities say because the, the consumers generally believe that the celebrity has been paid several millions of naira to endorse the product. Whereas um, a micro influencer, they feel like they, they share a close up you know, relationship with um, they take his words or her words as uh, the gospel truth about the product. Um, and in the last six months or so, I've seen a slew of content creators, YouTube, YouTubers in, in um, um, Nigeria picking up endorsement deals. Um, you know, Guinness signed um, three. The other day, just um, last week, I saw... Um, another big brand just signing, um, uh, uh, revealing the identities uh, of their new ambassadors, and they're all content creators. Now, why can't we have more musicians with not so big fan bases who are getting signed instead so that the brands can reach those 5,000, those 10,000 people that you sort of engage with on a regular basis, you know? The Alter guys, for instance, have done incredible work. The guys we refer to as the Alter guys in Nigerian music space don't have millions of followers, but they have very loyal followers. So if they have 20,000 followers, trust me, those 20,000 are very loyal to them. And it is those sort of opportunities that brands are looking for because they are far more impactful when it comes to promoting uh, products and services. So. Um, that's another opportunity to raise funds, long and short of it. Um, you may have 5,000, you may have 10,000. If you can prove that they are an engaging audience, that is a, is a monetizable opportunity because you can go sit down with the brands and say, you know what, um, this new product that you're trying to launch, rather than put the communication on spaces where people see but they don't act, I can promote it for you and get my own 10,000 followers to take action. 10,000 people who respond to the call um, to buy or to purchase is more tangible and more beneficial to a brand than 1 million people who see and take no action. And also okay. that's why, like, just one more thing, like, on regarding um, the following on social media, don't buy followers. I work with a lot of... Um, uh, Nigerian artist, and I know they they all made this mistake in the past because you can you would have like agencies they would contact you and say oh if you want one million followers I can do this for you but it's fake so you're gonna pay these people to 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 to, to have more followers on your social but after when it comes to to deals with brands the brands they can see if your followers are fake or real so even like if you if you want to to to, to keep your, your good reputation with all these brands, just like yeah, don't buy followers. <laughs> this is the number one advice I can give you today. Don't do it. Thank you very much, Fabian. Um, we'll take one final question. We we've, we've got to wrap it by five thirty local time, um, and I'll just ask this question to uh, Rabbi. Um, Okay, so just uh, some feedback from Mercy Udechuku, uh, who says, thank you so much, Fabian, Mark, Bada, and Rabbi for all this invaluable information. I'm really impressed and I appreciate you guys taking your precious time to help and encourage us. God bless. Thank you so very much, uh, Mercy, for those kind words. Uh, we're, we're very, very pleased that you find this valuable. Um, Ms. Eva Johnson says, awesome session. Many thanks to the moderator and panelists. Thank you very much. Kevin Groove says, uh, okay, he's thanking Swebi Abide for asking the question. So I've got to go look for the final question, uh, which goes to Rabbi. And um, if we have enough time, maybe uh, Fabian can also chip in. It says, what point should an upcoming artist engage a business manager? Should it be after he or she has worked 
hard to get a hit single, or a business manager should be able to pick a talent from scratch, helping him to discover a market space that will buy his or a kind of sound or music in Nigeria. So bottom line, when does it become necessary to engage the services of a talent slash business manager? Rabbi. Um, you need to unmute yourself, Rabbi. I'm sorry. That's um, a very important question because um, it, um, it's something that um, a lot of people have had to deal with in recent time. Again, like the word says, business manager. Um, you, you need a business manager when you, need, when you have a business. So when, when, your, uh, when, your, when your career becomes a business to you, um, then you do know that you need a business manager. Um, we cannot um, overemphasize the importance of having a business manager. Again, like I said, when you do have a business. Um, so there's a difference, a slight difference between a talent manager and a business manager. It's slight difference. Sometimes they're the same person, but sometimes they're two different persons. Um, a talent manager can help with the area of, you know, your um, development in uh, uh, pretty much all the steps that you need to um, um, pretty much get going. But as soon as you start um, earning some level of value, you know, money, some level of, you know, um, value that, of course, can equate to money. That's not necessarily you start making money, but you're in the radar. People are talking about you. Um, at that point in time, you need someone who can help organize your business, um, who can help um, reposition you. You need someone who understands um, the right um, business strategy, who can help, you know, for instance, um, Everyone that has spoken here has said so much about, Fabian said something that was, that's really key because um, it's one big problem with a lot of artists today. They just release some without any you know, release strategy. Um, you need someone who can sit down and create a proper release strategy. You, you need someone who can help you negotiate and find the right team in terms of what PR agency you should work with, you know, um, you know, who and who should do this and what best way to negotiate and whatnot. Um, these are some of the things that um, you may not know. Again, I also like to advise people at the beginning of your career, the artist should be the number one manager. You should be able to stay on top of your game. You should be able to um, know exactly what you want, organize yourself onto the point where you know you do need um, help. Um, and sometimes, you know, some people, you know, they, they have even their siblings, cousins, mother, you know, you know, being their managers. Bono, for instance, took his mother. The mother took him to the Grammys. So, yeah. So, yeah, you can have anybody could, you know, anybody who understands, who is very passionate about you, your talents, your career, your future, can definitely be, you know, um, a talent manager. Um, but if the person does not understand the business, it is best to get a business manager, you know, to help, you know, fill in that gap so you don't work hard for nothing. All right, thanks, Rabbi. So um, sometimes the talent manager is the same as the business manager. A talent manager is who sets all the right parameters, all the right um, elements um, and ingredients in place to make you know, the artist. Um, but the business manager basically monetizes all of that. The value that you are creating, the person takes it and starts to convert it you know, to uh, business. Okay, so uh, Fabian. Um, at what point does a business or talent manager become necessary for an up and coming artist? I think um, I'm, I'm totally agree. I think at the beginning, an artist can can start to do things by himself first, uh, because as we said before, now you can, I mean, you can do your pitch by yourself on Spotify for artists, for example. You can create your own content for YouTube, etc. You can. You, you, you can distribute your music with platforms like TuneCore. It's very cheap, uh, it's very easy to do. Because the thing is like, as we said before, the problem is the money now for a new artist. And sometimes some artists, they cut me and I can do it, but it's gonna be a waste of time and money for you because it's too early. Start to release two free songs by yourself and after come back to me, so you will, you will already have a few references and I would be able to pitch your project to them, for example, to the DSPs. And also you have to know that sometimes the media 
they like to speak directly with the artist and not with someone like me. So I think nowadays it's like five years ago, it was okay to pay a PR manager, to pay a business manager, project manager. But now I think today you need, if you want to save money, you need to start to do things by yourself. And if you go on YouTube or if you do like a masterclass like today, like once per month, you can learn a lot of things. You have a lot of videos on social, Instagram profiles with a, like, with a few advices. Even if you like the Spotify newsletter, it's very good. Follow, for example, TuneCore. TuneCore UK, TuneCore US, they give a lot of tips on, 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 on their socials. So do everything by yourself. And when it starts to grow, you will need someone because like it's like even when you want to start to negotiate a contract with someone it's always better to have someone because sometimes the artists are too naive to deal with like a like, like with a label or a brand and they don't know how to do it or they don't know how to 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 get the right attitude um so yes start by yourself and when you start to grow contact someone to help you to to manage everything wonderful well articulated um thank you i mean they say time flies when you're having fun um it's been one hour 30 minutes and it feels like we started 10 minutes ago um it's yeah. been a loaded loaded session with um great great information that can add value to the individuals that have been on this call i want to believe um before we wrap i'm just going to read this comment from green um he says Sorry, I took it for granted that Green was male, but my could not be female. Um, Green says, amazing session, time well spent. I love the gems that dropped here today. Absolutely, absolutely grateful to think it's a free session. God bless you, Mr. Bada and Rabbi and Mark and Fabian. God bless you too, Green, and God bless everyone who's been a part of this. Um, um, the, the big, big thanks go to the panelists, Fabian first. Um, thank, thank you. you for sharing it was your a pleasure. Wealth, wealth of experience with us. Um, it's such an invaluable time we've spent with you. Um, Rabbi, thank you so very much for always uh, being, you know, um, one to look out for, for the, the music ecosystem, for prioritizing knowledge sharing, knowledge transfer, and believing um, in, in the, the future of our industry. Um, and for being the host for this event, I said at the top of the uh, program, uh, Peaceville Academy will continue to hold the master classes. And um, the idea is that very soon when um, the, the environment, the COVID environment uh, permits us to gather, um, some of the sessions will start to hold in person um, and they will morph into a proper um, academy, the Peaceville, you have to watch out for the Peaceville um, Music Academy coming, coming soon. Uh, so these are precursors to um, more regular, more structured um, sort of educational uh, system within which um, we can, you know, bridge that gap effectively, that knowledge and skill gap within the industry. That's the plan. So God bless you for being a, such a visionary um, rabbi and for championing this particular uh, course. Um, and to Mark, who's left us um, uh, for other um, important things, um, we thoroughly enjoyed his time and um, his contribution and um, we'll pass on your gratitude to him um, after, after now. And the biggest thanks are reserved to um, the participants, all, all of you who took out time from your busy schedules um, and joined us on this particular meeting edition of the uh, Music Business Ma Masterclass. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your contribution. Um, and we do hope that it's been worth um, your while. Um, so on behalf of Peaceville, Peaceville Africa, um, the conveners of this particular uh, forum, I thank everyone, panelists, um, participants, and myself uh, for making it happen. Um, have a wonderful evening, guys. It's been wonderful, wonderful hanging out with you. And um, soon. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>
bridge and nothing to stress. Where I run the game, I'm feeling like great. No, like Moses part of the Red Sea, like a show in front of me in the back of the bed. So I step up, all white, can't see. What you want? Rose, champagne? I got that big bag, back pain. Taking the pit, the only time I can't eat. So we toast to the good life, I'm living every minute to the full, cause I could die. Pull up at this spot, open doors, and it's sort of stuff. So the red we went to check these couple hundred G's on a good night. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna